talking about um, student-led projects. We've uh, had one for about 21 years at uh, UNSW, uh, BlueSat. Um, Mark is a member of BlueSat. I've had uh, the privilege of working with these guys for about uh, 11 years now. Um, so Mark's going to tell us, uh, you've graduated recently. Yes. So he's going to tell us about his experience over the last five years of talk talking about the uh, open source CubeSat reaction wheel system. Uh, can you guys at the back hear me if I talk like this? Is that a yes or no? Yes? Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, as mentioned just before, my name is Mark, and I'm a student, or I was a student, at Unison, and today I'll be talking about the development of an open source CubeSat reaction real system. So, this was a project that I did for my thesis, for my undergraduate degree, and also as a BlueSat project. So if you haven't heard about BlueSat, we are an undergraduate student society that focuses on uh, developing space hardware in-house. So we have many projects, um, including CubeSat development and building a really nice Mars rover, and among other projects. And my colleague Timothy Guo, who is somewhere in this room, um, will be presenting on this uh, on our activities later today. But for this presentation, I'll be focusing on our reaction wheel system. So for those of you who haven't heard about reaction wheels before, they're basically metal disks attached to motors. And the principal operation is if you're in space and you start rotating a wheel clockwise, then because of the conservation of angular momentum, your satellite will start to rotate anti-clockwise. Um, so if you have a wheel in your x, y, and z directions, you now have full three-axis control of your satellite's orientation. And we call this a reaction wheel system. Now, what most satellite manufacturers do is they add a forced reaction wheel for redundancy. So if any one unit fails, then the other three can still provide that three uh, axis control of your orientation. <coughs> so CubeSat reaction wheel systems are widely available commercially. And the good things about them are that they're very reliable and they're highly optimized. The problem with them is that they cost a lot of money. So this may not be a problem for larger satellite developers, but for smaller groups, especially those with limited budgets, like we said, this is a big problem. So the so one approach, or rather, the approach that we've taken to solve this problem is something called open source hardware. And you've probably heard about it in projects like Arduino and several other 3D printing, uh, sorry, 3D printers. And the concept with open source hardware is that you take your design of your product and you make it open source and you let everyone or anyone who wants to contribute it contribute to the project uh, to sorry you let anyone contribute to the project and you also let anyone take the design files and manufacture their own product um, hopefully for a lower price than what is commercially available and this is the approach that we've taken to develop a CubeSat reaction wheel system. So over the course of roughly two months, we designed and manufactured our first prototype. So if you can't see this little thing over here, there's one of these three. Um, so on the top half of this CubeSat is the reaction wheel system itself. And at the bottom half, we have uh, the support systems. So a basic power system, onboard computer, comms, and sensors for the ADCS. Um, now, this is not space-worthy. This is simply a uh, simply hardware to demonstrate that our design that we made for the first time actually works. So you can see it in operation in these two videos. So the first setup that we used on the left is a, um, an air bearing test, uh, which was kindly provided to us by Axis to use. And on the right, we uh, we actually suspended the CubeSat at the bottom of the electrical engineering fire escape, and they both worked very really well. So in both of these setups, I've, uh, you can see that I'm commanding the CubeSat to execute a number of 90 degree orientation turns. And you can see that it performed it quite well. So we did a number of, of experiments, including detumbling and pointing in other axes, and uh, it produced very similar to results to what we see here. Um, so how does this design compare to commercial products? Well, this design actually has a few design advantages. Um, 
Um, the first being that it is very customizable uh, due to the fact that it is open source, so the entire design is, is customizable. And also due to the fact that we designed it in a highly modular way, so you can tweak one aspect of the design without messing up the entire design. Um, the, the other major advantage this design has is that it costs next to nothing. So the cost of parts was uh, just came under a thousand dollars, which is significantly lower than any other commercially available CubeSat reaction wheel system out there. Um, so the design does have a few disadvantages, um, namely that if the reaction wheel system, sorry, the reaction wheel units are exposed. So normally you would encapsulate them or partially <coughs> encapsulate them to provide uh, high reliability and to actually protect the reaction wheels. Um, and this was a design feature that we thought was unnecessary for the first prototype. The other d disadvantage we had was that um, the precision to perfectly balance the wheels on the motor shaft axes um, was simply not available to us as undergraduate students. And But this is the problem that we um, foresee that we can solve using high precision manufacturing techniques. Um, so in terms of future work, <laughs> What, or rather, what can we do with the design as it stands at the moment? So the design can actually be used to test out control algorithms for reaction wheel, uh, reaction wheel systems on actual hardware, instead of relying on a band -like simulation. And it can actually be used for non-critical pointing or stabilization applications. Um, and if you actually size it up, it may be used for high altitude balloon stabilization uh, things, which is really cool. Um, but moving forward, where do we see this project going? Well, as a first prototype, the electrical and mechanical design does need to be uh, further developed and optimized. The software does need to be written for um, allowing full three-axis freedom of rotation that you uh, experience in space. Um, and the final design does need to be verified in FBA functional analysis and actually sending it up into space see if it actually works. Um, but our end goal and the vision that I have for this project is that over time, over how many years it may take, with different groups all contributing to this project, that we would have a project that is so tested and developed to the point where it becomes a viable alternative to commercial reaction wheel systems at a fraction of the cost. So as I mentioned before, this project is open source. So if you want to have a look at the design or have a shot at developing it yourself, um, there's a link where the project files are available. And if you have any problems with design or if this if my code is unbeatable, then you can shoot an email to info at Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, time for questions here. Um, reaction wheels aren't really encapsulated to protect the reaction wheel. They're encapsulated because if you have li um, lubricants in the reaction wheel and put that in a vacuum, you're in trouble. So it's about getting the lubricant. So you go to Rockville Collins and they've got this um, reaction wheel that's in a vacuum that's encapsulated because they can't let the lubricants out. Oh, I see. Thank you for pointing for that. Um, that's how I understood yeah. it. Anyway, it might be there are some reaction wheel units which are partially encapsulated, so they're there for mechanical strength or protection. So the so use dry lubricants or the graphite? I assume so. The yeah, so graphite powder or space or vacuum razor lubricant, whatever that might be. Yeah. And they're not lifetime of them, are they? Yeah, they're not they're not high reliability. That's yeah, what I do. That's what we're called column testing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe um, the power of usage of uh, reaction wheels is uh, an issue. Um, is there any advantage uh, with the uh, open source design approach to reducing power uh, that can use the power that yeah. can use it? So, as, as it stands, this design is uh, not that comparable with commercial products, but my, uh, my intention is that through an open source design, uh, sorry, open source project, that this, these things would be fixed <coughs> over time to the point where it would be comparable to what a normal space manufacturer would do with uh, testing and optimization and doing funny tests. All of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
one more question. Uh, what's the aim for uh, or the performance expectation for the quantum and the stabilization? Yeah. Uh, often like, related to cost and, and the power Yeah. Um, short answer, I don't know, because I ran out of time on my thesis. Uh, but that is something that we're working towards in the future, to test out the pointing uh, accuracy of this thing. So. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Um,